on the case. And forensics will play a big role. So many witnesses in Ferguson, Missouri, are coming forward in the Michael Brown shooting. Well, some of those witnesses are conflicting. Therefore, it may all come down to forensic evidence. Now, Nancy Gray spoke with the forensic consultant who conducted an independent autopsy on Michael Brown's body. Take a look at that interview. Michael Brown was running away when he was shot. All right? We know that not to be true. He was shot front to back. Both of the shots, the one to the front uh, forehead right above the right eyebrow and the one to the very top or apex of the head was coming in at an angle this direction. So as, as you said yesterday, Nancy, it's going back to front. And the only way to get that angle because he is, is taller than Officer Wilson would be for his head to almost be like this, his chin down at Got his it. chest, and he's, okay. I don't know who runs that way. Now, well, I'm not saying- Let me ask you this, Sean, if you could give it to me in a nutshell, and, and dumb okay. it down for me, all right? Sure, sure. What other scenario is there for that trajectory angle? The other scenario that makes more sense to me uh, is the fact that to get that angle, he, Mr. Brown's head is almost to the ground and the right. barrel of the weapon is pointed downward. Now I need to point out, we don't know exactly what bullet hit Michael Brown first, what bullet hit him last. Did he fall forward? Was he running away or was he charging at Officer Darren Brown as has been claimed? So let's break that down. Law enforcement analyst Mike Brooks. We have criminal defense attorney extraordinaire Bob Shark in New York. How are you, Bob? So what I want to talk to the three of you about is the forensics. I want to yep. go through the bullet, okay? That's important. The trajectories of the bullet. We'll look at that graphic in a minute. I want to talk to you about the fingerprints, right, on that gun and the injury to the officer if there are any. So Mike, let's start with you about how forensics are going to be significant in this case. They are going to come down. I think that's going to be the key in this case, Joey, along with the different witness statements that we're getting. And, and we don't know how many witness statements have been taken so far, but getting down to forensics, it's going to, as you said, some of the things, fingerprints, DNA, DNA on the officer's weapon, maybe some touch DNA, uh, the wounds to Michael Brown, you know, look at that graphic there, Mike. You yeah. see the, the number of bullets. And just if I can ask you while you're going through it, you notice the bullets that are on his arm. Now, we don't necessarily know, though, whether those were frontal shots. You might look at an autopsy report. You remember the one Baden did, the independent right. one by the uh, family. And you might assert and claim that, hey, these are all front shots. But we don't really know that, do we? No, we don't know. And also, they talked about the one laceration on his hand. You know, could that possibly have come from what some witness account say were that was that first shot that was either in or just just outside the car could that have come could that also be could I it was a Sig Sauer uh, handgun and I tell you I've had my hand cut with a Sig Sauer when it was my issue weapon could maybe Michael Brown have been tussling with that gun when it went off the slide went back laser lacerated his hand that's why DNA is going to be so important on the gun and the other thing too his hat we've seen pictures of his hat his right. St. Louis Cardinals sure. hat sitting out by an evidence marker was there any damage to that hat from a possible round going through because we know that he was shot in the head? Or was that hat knocked off possibly during a tussle with the officer? All that plays big. All so, Bob Chuck, let me go to you. You look at the graphic right there, right? You see the entrance of the actual shots. And so what I pose to you, Bob, is this. There are conflicting witness statements about exactly what happened. And so the question becomes whether or not, look, was he falling forward? That is Michael Brown at the time that he shot. Was he charging the officer at the time that he was shot? How do you think the forensics are going to play into an evaluation of credibility to the eyewitnesses and exploring and determining what happened here, Bob? Right. As you know, Joey, every single witness you have potentially has already decided what narrative they want to decide, go with. There are the ones who support the Michael Brown narrative. There are ones who support the, the, the Officer Wilson narrative. But the forensics are going to be able to support whichever shakes out here in the grand jury. Absolutely. And as Mike just said, you know, forensics cannot lie to a, a jury. Okay, mm -hmm. the forensics are there. They can be argued, but they cannot lie. And they're going to support one way or the other what happened. And here. Bob, on that point, and Mike, I'll pose this to you. If you look at the gun itself, there's right. some claim as to whether or not Michael Brown got that gun or grabbed for the gun, rather. There would be, in the event that he did, potentially DNA evidence of Michael Brown on that weapon. In the event that that's the case, we don't know. How does that change the equation? That changes the equation by saying maybe there was a, an actual struggle for that weapon. You know, 
and I, and as I said, that laceration on Michael Brown's hand, did that come from when the weapon was fired? There's also gunshot residue on his clothing to see exactly how far away was he when the shots were fired. Big. So that's going to be huge. Yes. And, you know, when in the second autopsy by Dr. Bodden, they did not have the clothes to examine sure. for gunshot residue, for where the rounds may have entered his body, these kind of things. So that, you know, that was, you really didn't tell us much no. on that second autopsy. Absolutely. And, Bob, let me just pivot to you on the point. If you look at the injuries, alleged injuries, we don't know what, if any, injuries that officer had based upon any confrontation in the event there was one, based upon the door slamming. How would you, as a defense attorney, Bob, use that in the event the officer was injured to uh, defend the officer here with regard to imminent fear of his life? Right. I mean, it's going to all depend on the seriousness of the injuries. If it's just swelling to the face, you can make the argument, but I really don't think it's going to hold much water with the jury. If you have serious either lacerations, if you have potentially a fracture, there's this report of a possible orbital mm -hmm. fracture, that is going to play so much more as to that imminent fear. And as Mike said, the forensics inside the car are going to tell a lot. Potential DNA on the gun, number one. And two, the sure. original story that was released was that there was a gunshot inside the car first. Mm -hmm. Well, there's going to be gunshot residue, residue. inside that right. car. In the there event better that be. happened, Bob. Yep. And if there is, then it obviously corroborates the, 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 the officer's story. If there's not, then this is absolutely it's a whole other ball game. Defense. All right. Yeah, exactly. Mike's not going anywhere. Bob Chalk's not going anywhere. Yasmin, I understand there's a defense fund for the officer. There is. There, there's a defense fund for the officer who shot Michael Brown. Now tops $120,000. The fund for Officer Darren Wilson was created about a week after Brown was shot and killed. Now, as of right now, nearly 3,000 people have donated, pledging more than $123,000. The latest update reads, we want to thank each and every one of you who are standing behind Darren at this time. The positive messages, prayers, and donations are truly heartwarming. We cannot put into words how thankful we are. Now, the group is planning to have a rally for Officer Wilson this weekend in St. Louis. Now, during all the chaos in Ferguson, St. Louis police shot and killed another man. Up next, we're going to walk you through that shooting and talk about what the shooting victim was doing before he was shot. Could the situation be different? And you flooded the On the Case Facebook page when we discussed Jody Arias' upcoming sentencing retrial. We're answering your questions later in the hour. Keep it here.